This is how you can make the absolute highest quality real-time hair for your projects. Hey, I'm Jay, and in this video, we're gonna be covering the workflow that goes from taking a groom, exporting it as an Alembic file, importing it in Unreal Engine 5, creating a custom master material that we make an instance of with parameters that can do all kinds of cool stuff, and so that you can make hair like this. Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace, uh, the all-in-one web builder platform that everybody knows and loves. More on that later on in the video. Right now, for sure, without a doubt, the highest quality hair you can make for a real-time renderer with stuff just off the shelf is this workflow right here. You don't need Maya in particular, you just need any kind of software that obviously can make a groom, but anything that can make a hair system that you can export as an Alembic file, a .abc file. And then Unreal Engine, can take that and do awesome stuff. So without any kind of super special specialty tools that maybe some other like big companies have, I mean, Unreal Engine's free and you just need some software to make your hair groom. This is the best hair that you can ever make uh, up until this point. I should say up front before we jump in and start making some stuff, I did enable some things in the project that you'll need to do. So in your Unreal Engine project, you'll need to go to the settings and turn on a couple plugins. The groom plugin, and the Alembic importer. I also left a link in the description below to some useful things, including Unreal's actual documentation on doing some of these steps. So you can look over in detail in case I miss anything, but you do need to activate a couple of things that are free and everything. You just need to click a box and then restart your project and you should be good to go. So now let's jump into the tutorial that I recorded originally in real time for the patrons, uh, where they get the exclusive behind the scenes of me smashing my head into the keyboard for a while until I got it to work. So let's jump over and export some hair. Okay, here we are in Maya. This is the groom that we made in a previous video. We actually made this groom in for the Patreon. So if you're interested in learning how to do grooms like this, you could check that out. But we're gonna take this groom, which I have not exported Unreal Engine yet, and we're gonna do that so you can see what that looks like. Here we go. You can see here on the left, we have all the descriptions, which are represented right here. So first step is to convert the XGen description into an interactive groom. Now we need to do that because we have to export this as an Alembic cache. That's what Unreal gets. So we're gonna do that right now. All right, so let's select some of our descriptions right now. We'll do the head hair and the bun. So I can select both of them. And then up at generate, we'll go to generate convert to interactive groom. This little thing will pop up. You can just hit convert and then it'll do its thing. This may take a little bit. This is a pretty detailed groom, so we'll see. Boom, there we go. So now we have these two descriptions. So I can go over here and I'll just hide this. There, so now all we're seeing is this new interactive groom. All right, so you can see it looks a little bit different, but this is pretty cool. Now you could just export this, but you may notice you see how the hairs have these kinks. This is the resolution of our interactive groom now. So when we converted this to interactive groom, it doesn't convert it one to one. So something you can do is you can go into the attributes here. So if we come into the bun attributes, go to the attribute editor and we go to the spline description base. Here we go. You can see CV count is 50. So if we up this to let's say 80 and then hit rebuild, now it's a little smoother, right? Now be careful here because this, you know, if, if I went from 50 to 100, that would essentially double the cost of this thing. And depending on your build, like your machine, this can really slow down Unreal Engine. We'll look at some things we can do to speed that up if that's a real problem. But this type of thing does really benefit from having a pretty beasty GPU. So this is something, by the way, if you're having problems, you could drop this. And I really highly recommend you dropping this to as low as you're comfortable with, right? Like this might even be a little too much. I mean, you know, we're zooming in a lot right here, but just trying to show you like a fancy hairstyle. So now looking at the main hairstyle, this looks pretty good. Why don't we take a look at what it is? Okay, so it's at 60. Okay, so looking in here, you know, the thing that has the most curves are these flyaway hairs. And they don't look too bad to me. This, this, we have a kink right here, but just wanna make sure this looks nice and smooth. Let's take a look at what it would look like. So if we were to go up to 80, rebuild, smooths out a little bit. Is it worth it? I don't know. Should we keep it? I mean, we can always re-export it. So why don't we keep it 
fancy on the high end now, and then we'll see what happens when we export it. Okay, so now we have our two interactive descriptions. We've edited the CV counts so that we like the resolution of it and we're ready to export it. So you can just select multiple descriptions. That's pretty cool. Everything you have selected will export as one cache. That'll be one asset when you bring it into Unreal. So if you want to split things up and a little bit later, you'll see why you might want to do that. Different materials, different properties. Then just know that whatever you have selected will export as one cache. So maybe you want to do everything as one. Maybe you want to do separate parts. All right, cool. So we have them both selected and then we'll come up to generate again. Then we'll go to cache and then we'll go to export cache. We'll just check this option box. And this is it, it's just current frame and everything else is off. I also have right final width on here. If you've edited the width of your hairs, this will be put into the Alembic file, which is cool. Also, you will have control over the tip scale in the engine, so this isn't like crucial. All right, so we'll export this and then we'll just call it girl hairstyle two. We'll save that. And then if we hop over to the Unreal Engine, set up a little demo scene with our girl and then boop, groom option imports. You see Unreal recognized that there's a new source asset in the directory and then it automatically is like, hey, you wanna import this as a groom and then you can just hit import. All right, so we go to the content. So it's done, that took a little bit, maybe a minute. And then if I open up my content drawer, here it is. So I'll just drag it into the scene. There it is. So I'll zero this out and it should line up, but it doesn't. So here's kind of our first major quirk of this. You see, it's like this. Okay, so our hair is flipped and all out of whack. This is probably because my Miocene is set up like a normal human being where Y is up and Z is forward. And don't argue with me on this. This is my YouTube channel, so this is the law. But Unreal is doubly weird. Not only is it Z up, but it's like X forward so super weird. So I assume that's why we have this weirdness here. Now I'm gonna show you how I just correct this and this is what I do with my own projects. This could be an issue if you're doing animations. I'm not sure we're not going that far in this video to attach it to a skin, but I do feel like I should shout out in case you're interested and this might fix this, is there is a script that you can download on Gumroad that will help you to export uh, Alembic grooms for Unreal Engine. So I'll link that in the description below, but you can check it out here that it's a script, uh, a Python script in Unreal. And I think one of the things that it does is it flips it and gives it the correct orientation. So we're gonna give that correct orientation right now the old fashioned way. So what you need to do is come in here to the rotation and the X rotation is gonna be negative 90. The Z rotation is gonna be 180 and the X, it has to be scaled negative one. It's actually mirrored. So it's actually flipped. So yeah, I know that's weird and that sounds super sketch and jank, but you know, for what I'm doing, it doesn't hasn't caused any problems yet. Uh, I don't know a permanent solution other than, you know, perhaps using like that script I mentioned. I, I can't verify that, but it does other fancier things. I'm just doing a straight up Alembic export. And I think it's just because of the differences in the orientation of, of Maya. So we zoom in and here you go. I mean, look at that. I mean, let's just take a gander here. I mean, look at that. Like we're in a game engine, y'all. And this is bananas, dude. Here, I'll even turn on the DLS. Let's go, dude, quality time. So yeah, this is pretty dope. All right, now before we do a render and check this out, if we click the hair and then come over to the details, we'll see, we can actually see the hair asset with the magnifying glass. You can see that in the content browser. If we double click this, we see the actual like object properties. And then in here, this is where you can change things like overall width, which you might want to do sometimes. Like I do that for eyebrows sometimes. You have control over the root scale and tip scale. Like I said, this comes in from Maya uh, or whatever you did to make your ABC, but you can augment it right here, which is really cool. You have control over the hair shadow density and radius. So you can play with this if you want. For me, this is fine. Really the thing that we really want to click here is this, use hair ray tracing geometry, bam. So if we watch here, yeah, now our shadows got more detailed. So it does use voxels, but worth it. Using stable rasterization, you can see here, it groups things together. We're gonna leave this off too now because I've had some crashes playing around with this stuff earlier. So I'm just gonna keep it simple, but feel free to play with this and I'm sure these will get better over time. All right, so there you go. We'll save, we'll just hop in our little render camera here. We'll see how blurry this looks. Let's do a render. We'll save, come up to window, go to our movie render queue. All right, now let's do a render to see how it looks in 4K with some extra samples. Uh, hair really benefits from having 
like super sampling because it's going to be noisy. So even if you're doing a animated sequence, if it's not like real time, like live, you could do it through the movie render queue to get extra samples. So, you know, the hair looks crispy. All right, here it is. You can see I actually already exported the eyelashes and the brows too. So yeah, we have some noise here, but there's noise like in the camera, just unreal doing its cinematic thing. Their depth of field always looks really cool. Maybe this is too much for a portrait. Maybe I'll open it up the depth of field so we can see some of these flyaways. But yeah, overall, I mean, you know, for a real time render, I mean, come on now, you know? And look, look at these little hairs. All right, so that's looking pretty cool. Now we can hop out. I'll show you, might as well turn on our lashes too. So there you go. So yeah, it's like a little heavy, but it is much faster than Marmoset. And these are not polygon strips. These are actual curves. That's what's cool. And that would make this animatable, like pretty simply. Again, not gonna do that in this video, but because these are actual curves, you get a lot of benefits, including animation and physics and everything. So this is really the highest in real-time hair that there is right now. There's a lot of possibilities. The future for this is looking really cool. And it's something I'm really excited about. Okay, so we have our hair in the engine. It's looking pretty cool. And now let's talk about making a custom material and doing some, you know, fancier things. We'll get to play around in the material graph. If you haven't used that before, play around with some nodes and even a node that's made for hair. And we can do some fancy things to make this look a little bit more interesting, okay? All right, before we go any further, let's take a second to talk about Squarespace. So Squarespace, Obviously, when it comes to making custom websites, top tier, it's one of the few names you think of. And it's something I'm doing this year is making a custom website. I've used the things, I've used all the other things. I've spent way too much time making websites. And I eventually just did something really simple to get the job done. And now I'm starting to use Squarespace to build out something more custom because Squarespace is super easy to use. That's what I like about it. You can just start dragging blocks around customizing things and making a very modern website that scales to any kind of device. And then if you want to point it to your different projects, like I got a lot of things that are just kind of scattered around and it gives me ultimate control to be able to make a showcase and also have actual digital products that people can buy from my own website too. It makes it super easy to make something look really pro and super custom. So if you have your own business or you're doing your own projects, things that you wanna showcase or something you wanna build that's a lot more custom that you can get with some things that are free or some other things that are more rigid, then head over to squarespace.com. Do your 14 day free trial. You can build the site and play around the tools for free. Then when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash jhill and use code jhill to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain and launch your own custom website. Now let's talk about making some custom hair materials. If you want to get better at Unreal and start making shaders, this is kind of a good entry point, especially if you're super new to it, but we get to use some nodes. We get to use some tricks that are really common and also super powerful. So this is how you can make your own custom hair material for your own characters. All right. So I'm going to search for the hair material that we can change. So if I click content to go to the very top of everything in my project and search for the content, I can type in hair default material. Here we go. So if I open this, I can do the magnifying glass and dig to where this thing is. Hair strands, content, materials. Here we have some materials. So you can see I already made one from my other project, my flex project. So here's hair default material. If we double click this, this is all it is. So we're just gonna steal this first by duplicating it and then we'll call it hair, uh, you know, and then whatever you want. We'll just call it custom, I guess. And this is gonna be our master material. So if you're not familiar with the Unreal, you know, material etiquette or workflow, the idea is you make these master materials that we're gonna dig into and look at the material graph and make all these changes. And then you're gonna make instances of those and it's instances that get applied to your assets. So like for instance, we're doing a hair material. So if we did a project, all the characters that have hair would have their own hair instances and they'll all have one parent, which is this material. So we can make global changes and you can do fancy things by like opening up parameters so the artist can tweak what they want. Show you a couple examples of that. So not to overcomplicate, I just wanna tell you that's what we're doing. We're making the master material first, then we're just gonna make an instance and then apply it to our hair and we'll take it from there. Okay, so here is the new custom. Now we'll just change the color to something like 
bright. This shading model stuff, you don't really need this extra stuff right now. This is just for like when it switches to a lower quality hair. Really simple setup. We just have these three nodes attached to our material. So if we were to right click this now and then create a material instance, and then we'll call it girl hair instance. There we go. Then we'll click the hair. There's our asset. At the top is where the material would go. And we can just drag that on there. Boom, there we go. So we'll save this material now. Now we have our master. You could actually call this master too, by the way. Maybe I'll do that so that it's simpler so you can see what I'm talking about. So here's the master and then here's the instance, right? All right, so we'll just dive in here. Okay, cool. So now we have our new shiny material uh, and we have the instance of it applied to our model. Now let's do some fancy stuff. So we'll open up our master and we can start to make this a little bit more complex and do some cool stuff. So first, why don't we do like a gradient and we can make it look like our hair was dyed. It's the same kind of technique I used for flex. So we're gonna use multiple colors here and then I'll show you how we can use the hair node and then we can expose a parameter so we can dial that in, okay? So first let's look at that hair node. So if we come in here and we type in hair attributes, there it is. So really cool, this thing has all the data, it exposes it of your groom, like the U and the V, the length, the radius, seed, which is uh, every hair has its own ID. You can do cool stuff with this. Tangent, UV, blah, 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 right? Okay, so all we need is the length we're gonna mix two colors and we're gonna use the length to blend between those, right? So we get a gradient. So to do that, we're gonna add another color. Why don't we open up the instance too so I can see. So here's our parameters so far. We have the roughness and we have the color, right? Here's the color, here's the roughness. So we're gonna do another color. Colors are three vectors. So you see here, constant three vector, that is a color. And the three vectors are R, G, and B. So a little bit non-intuitive. You can't just type in color. This is what that is. And then so we can double click this and we can make it another color, like a dark brown, let's say. Very, very dark brown. Cool. There we go, now we got two colors. I can right click this and convert it to a parameter which would let me expose it. So we can call this color two for now. And then I don't know why we have an alpha. Cool, so now we have two colors and now we need to blend these together. So we can right click and we can type in LERP or linear interpolate. So we see with linear interpolate, we have an A and a B and an alpha. So now we can plug this color into A and we'll plug this color into B. And now we need an alpha, right? What we're gonna do is we're gonna add a multiply. So far, uh, we're using the most common nodes, by the way. Lerp, multiply. This is a constant, which is just a number, which we're gonna make another one right now. So here we go, constant. I'm just right clicking, by the way. That's how I'm getting up to this menu. So the constant we'll just put in here. This is also gonna be a parameter, which means it's exposed. We'll just call this length mix. All right, so we have our exposed parameter, which is what's multiplying. This number is gonna multiply with the length, and then that is what's gonna go in the alpha, and then that is what's gonna go in the base color. So just to recap here really quick, we have these two colors going into a lerp, and then the alpha is the length, and then it's driven by this number, which is multiplying the length, right? Make more sense probably visually in a second. So I gotta save this and that's gonna compile the shader and everything. And then if we go over to our instance, you can see here's color and color two. Why don't we clean this up? Call this color one. So here we go, color one, color two. And then we have our length mix. So this is what's applied to the character and this is what an artist would dial in. The cool thing about instances is that they pretty much work live. So I can come in here and here's the length mix and now I can start mixing it in, you can see. Right, cool. And I can click this, and that means I can change this too. And then I can click this, and that means I can change this too. The reason why we're clicking these means I'm editing them, remember, because it's an instance. So this actually, what we're building is the defaults. So if you were being more, like if you were actually working on a project, you know, you would choose better defaults, but we're just going fast and loose here. You can always clean it up later when you're making stuff, you are usually going pretty loose. 
Yeah, but there you go. Now we have some gradient in the hair, which is pretty cool. Let's continue adding to this material a couple more things to make it look more believable and a little bit more complicated of a material. So with our hair right now, looks cool. The gradient is a lot more interesting than we had it before, but it's just a simple tip to root gradient. And you know, what I want to make it look like is that she has her roots showing, right? Like she dyed her hair. Right now it's just a nice gradient. So what we wanna do is increase the contrast of the mask that we're making right here. This is an alpha mask we're making by multiplying the length with a number. Again, we're just getting a gradient that way. So there's a note for adding contrast and it's called cheap contrast. There it is. So we'll come in here and then we'll add it in between our little length thing and our alpha. So we need another uh, constant now to drive this. We'll convert this to a parameter and we'll call this contrast. That'll be the contrast. And then this will be the in. And now this will go into the alpha and we'll save that. So now we have contrast. So if we open this up, we can increase the contrast. Now it looks like it's less of a gradient, right? So it's working better, feeling like she has her roots exposed. So pretty cool. And again, what's really cool is we're just leveraging the data that's already in the Alembic. All right, so that looks kind of cool. Now let's do one more little thing, a subtle thing in our master material, and that is to take advantage of the seed. What I wanna do is just give a little bit of per hair variation, which is always a way to make hair you know, more believable, naturalistic, and uh, and it's quick to do and adds a ton of little detail, right? Subtle detail. So let's do that now. Hop back into the master. So here's our base color. You can just kind of scooch this away and then get all this over here. Fancy and organized by double clicking any of these if we want. And then you can just do this kind of thing. Make little roads and shit. I've seen people make beautiful, beautiful networks uh, that I'm jealous of. I am not a beautiful network person, but I wish. Okay, cool. Now we're gonna use a couple new nodes and we are gonna mix it in. We actually can just drop this. We'll actually get this out of the way. So we're gonna add a couple things together. So add, which is different than multiply. We're adding things together to make a sum. We're gonna use the U and we're gonna add that with the seed. And now we're gonna put that in a noise. There we go, so we got a noise. And that's gonna be our position. We'll move this up, give ourselves some room here. Now with the noise, I did a test with this before, so that's why I'm doing this, but we're just gonna save a step. Uh, the scale, I want it to just break things up and one is too high, it gets like kind of jittery. So we can just drop this and you can change this later, but just showing you out of the gate, I'm gonna change this. All right, now we're gonna use a lerp with this. And the reason why we're gonna use a lerp is that we're actually going to use this as an alpha. So we'll put this in B, get a constant, and we're gonna call this, convert to a parameter, and we'll call this noisiness, and we'll put that into the alpha, okay? So now what we're gonna do is, now that we got all this data thing come out of here, we're gonna multiply that with our color, and then that is what's gonna go into our lerp. So essentially what we've done here is we've made the blonde color more complex, okay? And, and this has been exposed. So if I save this, uh, hopefully we won't notice anything different. Oh, we do. Whoops. Let's see. We gotta bring it back. Okay, yeah. So essentially when it's at zero, it's there's nothing. So if we go to, well, now it's like over cranking it. Somewhere in here is like what it was by default, but you can see that it's a lot noisier now. Now this comes from the noisiness that we set. So we can play with that right now. It's like maybe this is too much. But you can see how, you know, we get a lot of cool detail here. Let's go back here and see what happens if we increase the noise. There we go. So we had to dial it back down now. But yeah, but now we have like different colors in here, right? And just adds a lot more complex look. So maybe we'll have the length come up a little bit more. Something like that. Cool. Something like that. There we go. Hop into our render cam. All right, we'll go into cinematics. A movie render queue. Cool, we rendered out a bigger 4K one. Let's take a look. There we go. So you can see our per strand differences and our little root fade here. 
And what's cool is you can easily change all the colors now, you know, whatever you want and use this for multiple characters. That's just some of the power of Unreal. So some of these nodes like, like Lerp, multiply, the three vectors, the constant, I'm making things parameters, cheap contrast. These are some of the most commonly used nodes when you're making materials. But you can see if I right click here and just like look at all these, there are a ton of different nodes to play with and really the possibilities here are endless. So now we have our material here, we have our hair in Unreal. And now that we have this material built, we can really do whatever we want. We can really quickly make this like super hot pink or red or something, anything I wanna do. I can change the gradient, where it goes, all that kind of stuff, right? And because all of these things are done in the master material, and then what we're editing here is the instance for our character, we can make multiple instances and you can apply it to all different kinds of characters. You can even apply it to a metahuman and you can do whatever you want there. If you wanted to, you could make a metahuman with like dyed tips or blue hair. I mean, really the possibilities are endless. I'm going to put a link down in the description to this hair master material so you can download it and check it out and maybe you can use it in your own Unreal projects instead of having to build it. But I really recommend that you get in there and get used to making materials in the graph because it's so powerful and we really just scratched the surface. So we imported some hair, we made a custom shader. I hope you can see the power here. I mean this is honestly to have this at home is really cool. Uh, just making hair cards. Uh, every now and again I get people asking me to make hair cards like just in a world where you can do this at home. I don't know why we'd make hair cards. I hope this is the future, but definitely when it comes to the absolute top tier, this is it. I hope you learn something. I hope you can use some of these tools in your own projects to bring your own characters to life. Really appreciate you watching the video up to this point. Thank you. And go out there and make some cool stuff. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.